Welcome to the ITM Podcast. This is episode 192 of the ITM Podcast, the official Red Sox podcast of CLNS Media. Brought to you by Prize Picks. I'm Joey Capone, and that. That's Scott Neville. Scott, welcome to the show, dude. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. I'm having a I'm having a panic attack. Should be fun. I'm excited. This is awesome. That's the correct response. So any uh, questions along the way here? Anything along the way where you're like, how do I do this? Who do I talk to? Uh, what's the right way to go about this? Those questions are going to be a little hard for me to answer. What to do when you're having a panic attack on a podcast? That's kind of my... That's kind of my zone. That's where that's where I can really help. So let's talk about us for a bit because it's been a wild ride to get here. Obviously, things are a little different. Uh, we had very little time to get stuff prepared. Uh, luckily, the folks at CLNS have been awesome about keeping the show rolling. They really believe in the show. They've wanted the show for a while. Uh, unfortunately, at SI, we had this dickhead executive producer who just would not let go of the show uh but clns has really got you into a good push. contract and he held it to you and yeah i'm gonna it, keep doing it was that. good for him it was definitely a good contract <laughs> for him and uh now we're free uh of him different scott different scott these are two different i'm not referencing that guy anymore Looks that similar. guy is hmm. i think i met him twice i don't even know if i can tell you have we met in person accurate. two times? San Diego. Yep. I went to so many games with Steve. I I don't know if I I don't know if you were ever there. I never went to Fenway in 2023. I think I went Do an opening day. four times. Yeah, I went opening day and then a couple of other times, but there was no need to go to Fenway in 2023. So I don't think we overlapped there at all. It might just be San Diego. If that's the case, I feel less good about this. I feel like we've talked pretty regularly, but I'm not. Yeah. I know I said put my name on the graphic. I'm ready to do this, but now that that's hitting me, um, yeah, think I about mean, it. I haven't think signed about it again. Yet, so yeah, before new, if yeah. you guys are hearing this episode, if this episode has been published, we've worked things out. If you're not hearing it, um, well, you really you're not hearing it. That's bad things. So yeah, but the people at CLNS got some people to thank. One to thank John Zanis, Amit, uh, Nick, Guy, everybody over there. There's so many people uh, that made this possible because this was a really short turnaround. Uh, we found out uh, about the change, being that Steve is leaving. I don't know why I was being like vague about that. We found out Steve was leaving yeah. uh, about uh, three, three and a half weeks ago. Yeah. Which is uh, a small window, and I'm not upset about it, but it's a small window to uh, figure out what to do with your podcast when – your primary host is leaving. So there was a scramble job, but CLNS gave up on covering the Red Sox in 2020. They lost uh, two of their reporters and they had one guy, they transitioned him over to Celtics and um, were just done with the team in general. They liked this show so much that they are rebooting all of their MLB and Red Sox coverage because of this show. And because of you guys, because of the listeners, because they saw what a, what a cool fan base that we got and how devoted that they've been. Uh, and all it took was Steve leaving for them to really pull the trigger. Yep. Which is... And which is, mm -hmm. that makes sense. And, and they're just giving it all to you as well. So we can control propaganda. Um, mm -hmm. Anything on the YouTube that can come from you directly. So if there's anyone else that joins us, we can we can just stuff them down and put our show on top. It's good. It's a good spot to be in. Yeah. So the YouTube's actually a perfect transition. Let's talk about some of the things that are changing. Uh, yeah, the guy with the Nike hat's gone. He's doing uh, that other show now. Uh, we got a new intro, I guess. That I guess that is that worth mentioning. You guys may not be hearing it on this first episode. Uh, we are still waiting for it, but it's worth it because of who's doing it. That we're gonna wait. We might just run an announcerless intro for the first couple of episodes. Uh, the other thing, our full episodes are on YouTube now. You can find it on our Twitter. It's kind of hard to find if you're just searching for it. 
Uh, if you search Red Sox CLNS, Red Sox Clubhouse, listen, it's been dormant for years. I just said that. So it's yeah, going to be, it's building it back it out. out. You can't, you can't search it right now. Give it a week or two. Once you guys get it to, you know, 25,000 subs by next Friday, it'll look a little bit better. It'll be easier to find, but all of our uh, episodes are going up there. All of our interviews are going up there. Uh, we're going to be, you know, making more videos like we did before vlogs and that kind of stuff. And also getting ba -ba -ba in clubhouse stuff that might not be off the bat either, but we are going to be uh, doing some um, media posting there. So if you want, you know, full clips of uh, media stuff, uh, we are going to be posting those there as well. Another part of this, but this is before, this is all before your intro, by the way, we haven't even, I'm good. We're going to do a full deep dive into who you are, how, why you're here, who the fuck you are. Yeah. Uh, before that, I want to give people just an idea of everything else that's changing. The other thing that was mentioned in that uh, awesome promo video that some very handsome producer and editor at CLNS put together was weekly live game casts. Now, Scott, do you have a Twitter account? You, ba you barely. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. That's that's one of the things we're going to have to change. But but you do. You have an account on there. I tweeted uh, a couple weeks ago. Like, man, I'd really love to do a Manning cast style broadcast of Red Sox games. Scott, would you believe me if I told you that was a tease? I'm going to be honest with you, Joey. Mm -hmm. This is a news. This is news to me. And to be honest, I watched that mm -hmm. intro, the announcement you sent it to me before you posted it. Mm -hmm. I probably watched it six times because anytime somebody liked it, I pretty much got a notification. Mm hmm. I didn't know what that was, uh, and I and we're just gonna figure that out right now, aren't we? Am I involved in this? Do I yep. have to do this too? Oh boy! <laughs> yeah. So you can, you can. What's? I can't believe it hasn't it hasn't come up at all. That's a testament You're to how crazy the past few you? weeks have been. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's very weird. Yeah, very out of character. <laughs> so we're still ironing out the details there, but what's going to be happening is Thursday nights. I'm going to be going live on an app doing like a Manning cast style broadcast of games with a rotating cast of other people coming in and out, having some beers, watching the game, just bullshitting. And there's uh, a live chat. Uh, it's going to be on a different app. So it's not going to be on Twitter or Instagram. It's going to be uh, on an app that's built for this kind of thing. Uh, and it's a newer opportunity. It's a new thing that they're rolling out. They reached out and wanted to be a part of this. Uh, so like I said, still ironing out the details. That's why I'm not mentioning their name or anything yet. Still got to get the contract signed there. If you can believe it, there's still more fucking paperwork to do. Uh, but I once that all gets anything. worked out, you haven't signed any. I better get a fat Venmo after this. I'm not doing this for free. I'm doing this for the money. I think it might be a Venmo situation for a while. Good to know. Neither here nor there. Uh, but that we're really excited about that. I'm really excited about that. I don't know if you are. You're just finding out about it now, but. I like uh, the idea. It sounds really cool, actually. Um, I don't. Yeah. I'd have to see. I'm curious how that would look. Are we doing it Zoom in person? Do you know any of these um, questions? I'm doing it. I'm doing it over uh, in my phone uh, and just getting other people in. Always welcome to okay. hop on. I think it's going to be an open door policy. Like if it's a Thursday night game, I might just open a group chat with a bunch of media people and be like, "Hey, come watch Let's the game if you want to." And mm -hmm. it's just a you know place where uh, you know there's a chat room. People can interact. Um, people can tip you if they're crazy. Don't do that, please. I'm not in it for the money. I'm in it for no, the love of the game. If you give me money, I'm I'm going to I'm I'm going to throw it away in the garbage in the little garbage. I'll go to an ATM and I'll throw it away. Don't give me your money. No, no wait, I'll take it. No, send no. Them, send us some money. A lot of it. It's dirty money, bro. You can't even have if it. it hurts your income. Like I don't care if you can't pay rent. Let's do this thing. You know. Let's <laughs> let's devote a lot of hours to something that doesn't make a lot of money. Let's do it. That's that's kind of my whole that's my whole MO. Here is our last big change. And you already know what it is, but um I saved the best for last. How nice was that? Was that nice? Because I'm talking about you. Yeah. Oh, oh it's me. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah it's you. Yeah, the biggest change is the addition of my good friend Scotty Neves. Scott Neville. Um, my former boss, still technically my boss, I guess. Yeah. Uh, tell the folks who you are, how we met, what you've done in the sock space, uh, all that stuff. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, I've been instructed to be 
exactly like Steve. So it shouldn't change much. Joey's been really strongly. He was like, you don't do not be yourself. We're just going to try and keep this thing rolling. Do not screw this up for me type thing. So um, not a, doesn't even really matter who I am uh, is the big thing. But um, yeah, so I've been running uh, Red Sox coverage for, I used to work at Nesson like a couple of years ago. Then I went to Sports Illustrated. I run the Red Sox uh, coverage. They just got sold on Monday, but I'm still, we're still going to stay with them. And that's nice because even though CLNS is still starting up the Red Sox coverage, I still have all of the abilities that SI will give us as far as credentials and all that. So we have all the power that SI can give us. So that's basically, you know, that's the good thing about us teaming up with both. That's what I do primarily. It's mostly writing for me. Although as we've continued to expand, I've done less, more, less front facing stuff and more um, managing and taking phone calls. But I, I wrote today, I'd still write pretty much daily a little bit. Which is crazy. I mean, the writing daily part is crazy too. I can't, I can't believe that. Um, yeah. I think I'm running on, I'm running on a full year of employment with SI and I think I've written five pieces. So that's, yeah. that's a, that's about the pace that I work at. So writing right. every day. Um, and it was that drive me. that got me there, got me to hire you. It was that level of drive that made me feel so good about that choice. You were like, you know what? This guy's probably going to write once every couple months. It's probably going to be about how much he loves somebody associated with the team. It's either going to be, why are we all mad at Heim? Why is mm -hmm. Justin Turner not here? Why are yep. we mad about Trevor Story's contract? It's just going to be that kind of stuff. Stop being mad. Start liking everybody. That's that's what I've contributed. Uh, but you kind of nailed it, dude, of why why it is you're here. Because I haven't told you why you're here. Uh, you've been right. behind the scenes for a while. And you've built something really big. I don't know if people recognize that. Like, If you search, just search the latest Red Sox news on Google. Just go there and search whatever. Search that, uh, you know, Rafael is the, the opening day center fielder. One of the first news stories that comes up is consistently Scott's piece on Sports Illustrated or on SI.com slash Red Sox. Uh, and as much as you've mastered that space in getting to know you in the, the I guess, one single time that we've met. In person, yeah. Uh, but over the phone, having you on ITM in the past, it was like, why isn't Scott doing personality based stuff? It just seems like the next natural thing. Uh, you did need a push. I'll be honest. You needed a push. Yeah. And I think you were kind of like, ah, uh, like I'm doing this thing. I'm already rolling here. I don't care, dude. I don't care. The Red Sox space has a lot of personalities. Uh, some of them good. Few of them good. Yeah. And we need more good, bro. And I think you're a good. So you're here because you're a good. There you go. There's your explanation. I, yeah, I appreciate that. I mean, look, I... It's it was an interesting journey to hear because I actually thought, you know, when I was in college, I did all this stuff, you know, just to get experience, just you know, for free for various things. Uh I started a website that uh got me to all into the writing path because I started getting written views on that. But I actually podcasting was what I like to do the most, radio stuff, stuff like that, just talking to a mic. Uh and then, you know, the writing stuff is is I started to figure out the, you know, the Google uh SEO stuff and I started to get a lot more views, a lot more traffic, a lot more cash, Joey, a lot more money coming in in the written game right now. And that's so, why I write so much, bro. I'm yeah, telling you. Exactly. That's why I keep pumping out articles once every other month. And so, exactly. And I get to edit those 1,600 word pieces, even though I keep telling you to do two to 300, but that's okay. Um, that's okay. Uh, whatever. Those, who cares about, you know, efficiency? Uh, not no. Joey. Um, so. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I thought that's where I was going to go. And then when I started to do the written stuff and then I started, you know, I cover the Red Sox, but I also cover the Cardinals or doing some stuff for the Brewers. I'm do, I, you know, I got a lot going on and the podcast for me became something that was like, I, I don't know if I can do the sponsors and the, not that I was doing too well there, Joey. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, I don't know I, what uh, you're talking about, but that's, I'll accept, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying it made, I mean, just the way the industry goes, it makes a lot more sense too. like, you know, I, I gave up basically the ownership of this place to then be a writer. I mean, a, a you know, host, and that's a very dumb lateral, uh, let's move down, but, um, it's a down, it's a it, down. It yeah. makes, it makes more sense 
for someone that knows what they're doing, a, it makes more sense for a podcast uh, conglomerate to to get deals and stuff like that than for me to do it individually. So, you know, the front phasing thing, you know, when I got the show, I thought I was going to do a lot more stuff. I was never going to be like asked to come on, but, you, you know, I had a feeling we'd get there and, and we did. Mm -hmm. But I was supposed to I thought I was going to come on almost weekly in the off season, And then I just didn't. Let me tell you, let me tell you what actually happened. There's a peek behind the curtain for you and for the people at home. Me and Steve had about 15 conversations to make you the third chair on ITM. And uh, it was funny enough, your shitty Wi-Fi that oh, we yeah. just go, we just can't do it. So, I, and I told them him that too. I think I could have, yep. you guys opened the door for me to do that yep. a long time ago. I, and I actually, that was my biggest reservation as well. And I don't get it. I moved into, we moved locations. Um, I pay just an asinine amount of money for Wi-Fi, and yep. it's still a shit show no matter what I do. So we're still, now we're well, doing it. Here's the thing. Choice. We're 15 minutes into the first episode. We're rolling. We're cruising. So it doesn't seem like it was a huge issue. So it might have been a cop out on our part. We might have just not wanted to have a third chair. But that was, that was what we kept telling ourselves. We were like, ah, yeah, but this Wi-Fi. Yeah. No, and I, I and I, yeah, I, I think for me, like the few times I came on, I don't know if anyone ever like noticed it. Um, we tried to avoid it with promos and stuff like that, but there would be points where like we had a cut because I'd be five seconds behind, I'd jump in and it would, it would, I'd say something about a conversation we just passed and, and we'd yeah. have to like cut it. And it was the last time I came on was such a nightmare that I was just like, I don't want to do this. And then also, like, I've always been very comfortable on the mic. But when we started having technical issues, I was scared to jump in because I and then I was I was also tense because I was just waiting for it to break. And that, you know, maybe we'll do it again. We might have to keep that going. We'll see what happens. I mean, it would just be tradition. Uh, but yeah, I mean, for for anybody at home who is a long term listener, you already know, Scott, you've heard Scott on here a couple of times. But yeah, in case you didn't know, Scott was supposed to already be here. So this to me doesn't even really feel like adding Scott to the show. It just feels like. Uh, adding Scott to the show. I don't know. Finally, like making him part of the show. Well said. And I'll also tell you the 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 what the process was like. If any, because I got a lot of messages. I have a whole thank you thing. I'll save it for the very end. But I had a lot of people reach out about wanting to be the third host. And I also had um, a couple of people that I reached out to uh, at the beginning um, to co-host the show. Um, but Scott was the first person I called. There was uh, it was Scott called me or Steve called me one night. Let me know about Section 10, uh, which is what they're calling that new podcast that they're making over there. The startup. And yeah. yeah, that new startup with um, what what is it, what is it called again? The company? Uh, are we supposed to actually? Do you want me to tell you? <laughs> I was hoping you had something funny besides it, underdog. It, it's fucking it, underdog. No, I never had, never expected to have something funny. Um, don't do that. That one's probably again. on me. That one's probably on me. Uh, yeah. This is, so when Steve told me that, it was like a whatever, like a Thursday night. And I think I called you the next afternoon. Yeah, I, I let like, you. I let you breathe. I because yeah. uh, I talked to Steve right after, um, and he was like, basically like Joe's trying to figure out what we're doing here. And I was, yeah. I was just like, I'm gonna let him call me. Yeah, yeah. And I appreciate that because when I reached out to you, I was like, Have you heard what's going on? You're like, Oh, I know. I've been giving you time to reach yeah. out to me. I wasn't going to be the one to text you. So I appreciate that. Uh, and in that conversation, I was like, show's not ending. Zero chance. There is, uh, there's no reality where this show just goes away because Steve left. As much as I love Steve, as much as I appreciate everything that Steve has is, is done for the show, it, it wasn't the Steve show. It's not the Joe show. It's fucking ITM. And there's, uh, a community around the show now that wants the show. People deserve the show. The people are demanding the show. People are getting the show. That's just happening one way or another. And then immediately from there was like, and I want you in. Um, and I'm glad. I'm glad you said yes. It was very quick. It only took you about two and a half weeks to say yes, but yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad that we're here and that we're doing it. Uh, we do have some awesome other big plans uh, and some big guests. We have uh, a long line. Let me tell you, when something goes down, like getting laid off from Odyssey or uh, your uh, co-host um, abruptly leaves. 
there is a long line of Boston sports media personalities who reach out and say, let me know if you want me to come on, I'll come on whenever. So we now have a long list of people who I have told, I am holding you to that. You are coming on this show. So uh, we are going to have some big guests, but probably none bigger than our very first guest out of the gate. We got David Ortiz on this show. Yeah, that was crazy. That was not supposed to happen. No, and it was out of nowhere. The timing of this was unbelievable. And uh, shout out to you. How about that? Your first episode being a co-host, you're like, hey, I, I actually got somebody who I think uh, can come on. His name's David. Yeah, I said, I, this guy, he's got a good personality. He's kind of, I just feel like he has a, he might be able to do something in this media space. And he, mm -hmm. you know, he emailed me or, well, let's not be, let's be real here. Uh, he has people email for him. Um, but, uh, and he was like, can I, can I please, can I please come on ITM? And I said, yeah. You know what's crazy Fine. is that's not even far off from what happened because no. <laughs> David Ortiz asked to come on the show is what is what that's happened. True. Yeah, I think that's and, I think that's close enough to the truth. And he was like, it's since like 24 hours and not even it was less than 24 hours. He was like he was like, they were like, do you want to talk to David tomorrow? And then they also offered us um, an interesting cast uh, that we didn't have on. It was uh, J.J. Watt. Mia mm -hmm. Ham, Jorge Posada, uh, Reggie Miller, mm -hmm. and I think that might be it. And I was like, I don't know if they're the perfect fit. And before people start screaming at their car radios, yes, yes, we thought about Mia Ham. We thought about yeah. it for the obvious reasons. We thought about it. In case you don't know, That'd Mia be... Ham is married to Nomar Garcia Parra, and we thought, is it crazy to get Mia Ham on? Ask her a couple soccer Talk questions. Ask her a couple more questions. And then just ex wife. And then be like, not, what, real quick, for the next 15 minutes, what is Nomar, what is he like? What is he like in person? Yeah. Is he cool? What does he smell like? And uh, yeah. I, I think I think that offer might still be on the table. We might get Mia Ham on the show. But short of that, we have the other biggest guest that we could possibly have on this show. And that's Mr. David Ortiz. So... Let's toss it over to that. Without any further ado, I know a lot of people are probably tuning in uh, very excited for that. So let's get over to it. Uh, but before that, a quick word from our friends at Prize Picks. Football season may be over, but the action on the floor is heating up. Whether it's a tournament season or the fight for a playoff home court, there's no shortage of high stakes basketball moments this time of year. Get in on the excitement with Prize Picks. America's number one fantasy sports app, where you can turn your hoops knowledge into serious cash. Testing my skills on prize picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps. Prize picks is really simple to play, and I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds download the app today and use code clns for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars use the code clns for the first deposit match up to a hundred dollars pick more pick less it's that easy ladies and gentlemen we are joined by hall of famer red sox legend the one and only big poppy david ortiz david how you doing i'm doing good how about you joe I'm doing good. Poppy is here with Miller Light. Want to say that off the bat. So thank you to them for getting us here. Uh, you were down in Fort Myers this spring, David. Uh, what are your general thoughts on the team right now, having been there, and uh, any takeaways that you got from uh, spring training? Uh, we've been, you know, rebuilding. Uh, we uh, we all the young players. Uh, I think organization go through that uh, at some point. And sometimes it's, it's hard for people to understand that part of uh, baseball. Uh, but uh, it is it is it is how you give the young talent the opportunity to get very familiar with the major league. So at some point, their talents. Uh, get to be exploded 
and and all of a sudden you have a superstar uh, right there. But you, the organization normally at some point had to go through that, and I think that's that's what we are going through right now. Uh, I know that when you play for you know big city like Boston, the fans they don't have that patience to wait. Everybody want to win, and I understand that because we brought that in. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes, you know, you got to go through it to get to the point and because it's not easy to win every year. Yeah, you mentioned those young guys and their development. And I remember you talking last year about you making yourself available to those guys and letting them know that you're there to talk if they wanted to, uh, but that they hadn't really reached out last year. Uh, oh. Has that changed at all since then? Uh, it's getting better. You know, it's every, every year, you know, they, they go for something that, that they need, you know. Uh, one of the toughest things about putting together a good team is uh, are the injuries. You know, the injuries is something that are there, but you just don't know when they're going to pop. And the team is doing a good job, good job managing the players so so they can uh, stay put. I know that we need the additional couple of pieces, you know, that I guess at some point is going to happen, but we'll see how they how does this going to begin with this uh, young group of players? Yeah, it seems like we might be uh, maybe maybe a year away from those bigger additions that we were hoping for. Um, but one player that we got last year that was that was a pretty big factor was Masataka Yoshida. Uh, he is now expected to be the primary DH. You know a little something about that. Um, there is there was a lot of talk about how he kind of broke down last year a few times. He had a high ground ball rate, and it looked like he was kind of out of gas at times. Do you think? him being in the primary DH role will help with that? Or do you think it's kind of exaggerated how much rest you get? Because you're still in cleats for four hours. You're still warming up. You're still having to stay loose the whole game. Well, we'll see how that played out. But I think it will definitely help him to stay put throughout the season. You know, we have a lot of we, – we, people sometimes don't realize that the Red Sox, um, we all the – um, Sunday night game, we all the travel, everybody has, like, like the Red Sox have fans worldwide. And whenever we are coming in town to any city, people want to watch us, people want to come to the field, you know, to support. And sometimes that make our schedule a little tough. You know, and, and a lot of guys, uh, coming from overseas, sometimes they're not used to that system, so they got to get used to it. So the team always found a way to help them out because we want to keep them healthy. We want to keep them uh, uh, that state, you know, good to go throughout the season. So uh, um, I think him, the aging and being part-time position player, I think it'll help him to, to get there. What are your thoughts on Rafi? Uh, we've seen him grow up quite a bit over the past few years. Uh, and a few weeks ago, he took a, a leadership step forward, if you will, kind of talking about the state of the team, ownership, the needs of the team. Um, what are your thoughts on that? What do you think about him uh, stepping up, speaking his mind, and uh, saying what he thinks about the team right now? Good. That showed me that he's a winner. You know, you want to win. If I was on his shoes, I would do on the the same thing. Because he get prepared to win. He get prepared to demolish baseball. He get prepared to 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 bring his best on the field. This guy, when I look at him, I think of me. You know what I'm saying? A type of way. And he's the guy that he don't say much. And you know those people that they don't say much when they talk? Sometimes it's needed. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and Rafi, oh, you know... He say very well done. He say, you know, I control what I can control, but I like to win, you know. And and when you when you feel that way in his position, you have the freedom to speak out, you know, and say what you feel. So the rest of the people around you get the memo. So I think it was, I think that what he say was very professional. And as an athlete, that's the way you look at them. I don't, I don't expect less than that from him. Yeah, and since Bogey left, there's kind of been a void 
that like needed to be filled a little bit. And it seems like he's stepping into that, which is awesome, which is great to see because he was, you know, the kid for so long. Now to see him stepping up and taking that next step is awesome. Uh, another guy who's taken a step forward, uh, Bayo, and as of today, uh, was named the opening day starter. Uh, have you gotten to uh, talk to him? And what's your impression of him, not just on the field, but off the field as well? That's one of my boys. You know, I've been giving him advice combined with Pedro because we want these kids to, uh, at that level, we want them to stay focused and to get to bring their best uh, and left it on the field, you know, and, and Bello is one of those guys that have an amazing talent. He, he carried that with him. He got it stronger this year, in a good shape, but we want him to come, try to come like that every year, you know what I'm saying? So, that's why we got to continue on their ear, preaching them and then they know, you know, about all those things. Yeah, and you, you mentioned, you know, Pedro getting uh, involved in his training as well down in the DR. Uh, what did you think of the DR series and, uh, you know, bringing MLB to the Dominican Republic? I love it. I love it. I think we should do more than that because I think after the U.S., we are one of the countries that produce more, more baseball players. So I, I I think the most valuable player I think are coming out of the Dominican Republic after the U.S. So I I think that motivate kids down here to wanting to be part of MLB. You know, I mean everybody would like to be a baseball player down here, but the motivation is always needed. Yeah, and I think. Uh... It'd be pretty cool to watch, you know, like even regular season games or at least the yearly spring training thing. It definitely is uh, something that's, you know, growing and it would be a fun thing to do. Joey, maybe one more question and then we'll get into the Miller Light stuff. Uh, yeah. I'm sure people ask you a lot about, you know, your favorite moments of your career and all that. And I'm sure you're, you, uh, you have that answer ready to go. But I'm more interested in right now, the David Ortiz of today. When you go to Fenway Park now, what's going through your head? Do you feel like you could suit up and get out there? Are you replaying your memories? What's going through Big Poppy's head when he walks through the gates of Fenway? I wish I could suit up and go out there. It doesn't work that way, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be a baseball player, it takes a lot of preparation. Uh, it takes a lot. I mean, being a baseball player is not that easy. Sometimes people look at you, they see that you stay in good shape. And they think that you can just pull the trigger and go. Uh-uh. It's not work that way. Uh, but whenever I go there, man, I have so much fun with people. Uh, a lot of memories, you know. People always uh, get to ha get very happy to see you. La uh, Yatra. And people, you know, always get to enjoy, you know. Having me around, I mean, people always want to talk about situation that we have, this and that, uh, while I play. I mean, it's a lot of good memories. And and to be honest with you, it's something that I, uh, I get to enjoy. Yeah, I think uh, I think if you saw your baseball savant numbers from your final season, you might disagree that I think you might be able to suit up. Uh, I might take a you know maybe a couple of spring training hacks, but I, I it was pretty much a hundred percent exit velocity and everything. So uh, yeah. Anyway, um, last thing we just want you know you're here with Miller Light. We want to ask you know what is the best part of Miller Light in your opinion? The taste. <laughs> okay. All right. You're bringing you know, that with back. The taste, man. I, I, don't, I don't mind anything about the feeling, but the taste is something that to me, that's what got me on everything. But, uh, you know, being part of this campaign is something that I I really enjoy. Uh, growing up, watching all those commercials from back in the day where they put all those artists and celebrities together. And, and all of a sudden being part of the new campaign who is bringing back the time uh, uh, it's something that, uh, uh, it's an honor to be honest with you. I mean, Team Miller Light is, is, is very special. All the people that work there, uh, the producer while we were shooting, everybody's great. 
I have a, I have such a great time. And uh, reuniting with some of my boys, you know, Pusara, uh, uh, Miller, Reggie Miller, JJ Watt, you know, Mia Hand, you know, so some people that down the road at some point you've got any connection with, some connection with them. So getting to reunite with them is something that is uh, very special. That's awesome. I have to agree with you there. But uh, we know, hey, man, David, we really do appreciate your, your coming on here. Um, uh, yeah, thank you so much. And I will look forward to uh, seeing you at Fenway. Thank you very much, guys. See you guys out there. Now, Scott, was that my favorite interview I've ever conducted? Um, well, if you count what Benny coming on as a guest is like an interview, then I'd probably mm -hmm. say no. But if you, yeah, probably, other than that, probably besides me, yeah. Yeah, besides besides the uh, spiritual awakening that happened when you and I became best friends. Uh, right. Yeah, then besides that, yes, my favorite. Was it the best interviewing I've ever done? No. I, I hope not. No, it certainly was. <laughs> if that's as good as I get, we got a real problem here. Was it my first interview at the helm of this show with David Literal Ortiz? Yeah, and yes, it was our first time working together as a duo. Um, yeah, that was a lot in a Zoom with like five other people. I would have loved an hour sit down with David Ortiz. We were on some like tight time constraints, as you could tell, it wasn't the longest interview. Uh, I obviously had some technical issues at the end there too. Uh, I also stammered and stuttered pretty bad at the beginning, and we had to cut it out. I called Miller Light Big Light. I called it Big Light. Thanks for coming on with Big Light as the yeah, Miller Light representatives good. were in the room. So mm -hmm. uh, Poppy has always been the guest that, you know, I've wanted to have above any other to come on the show. Um, and again, all it took was Steve leaving for it to happen. So thanks to Miller Light for getting us Poppy. Thanks to you, I guess, for having an email that David Ortiz has in his context. The Steve thing actually is kind of true, all jokes aside, because the biggest problem I had in the past is since I brought you guys onto the old platform, I had talked to Pedro twice and Ortiz once previously, but they always wanted me to do the the written in the video content and stuff like that. And yep. the only other way we could have done it is if the three of us interviewed one person for like 10 minutes and we each asked like one question. It was a mess. This was the first one where it was just easy because I was like, hey, I can easily just bring Joey into this and we can put it on ITM and then start doing other stuff. Because like, for example, like, peek behind the curtain like adam duvall i like when we had him last year i had to interview him separately of you guys and, and then we just sent him from my call to yours and we were able to do both and make a lot of content out of what both things were said but that was messy and i tried to do there was a pedro one a couple of months ago but it was in person and so whatever i called you and i said we would need four five mics because his wife was there as well uh, and so we need, yeah. five and we had cameras and cameras. had to set them all up. And at the end of the day, I think all together, they said we had what, 20 minutes. And it's like, that's enough time to set up and take down the cameras. Now, what they didn't tell me was that they had two sets that would be jumping between. So we actually had time to set up, but they left that out. So, um, um yeah, good. You didn't know that till right now. So I'm sorry. About no. that. Um, well, but yeah, okay. we, okay. I, yeah. So now, now that it, thank God that Steve's gone. Can't trust a guy that likes dinosaurs that much. We can finally do this thing, you know? Yeah, I think I think the kind of kid that you are says a lot about you as an adult, mm -hmm. you know? There are some kids that are truck kids. There's some kids that are action figure kids. There's some kids that are dinosaur kids. Steve reeks of a dinosaur kid. I don't yeah. trust the dinosaur kid. I just don't. My, I have know. a son. I don't know if I've mentioned this on the show. I have a son. He's almost four. When I see him playing with other kids at the playground, he's playing with a dinosaur kid. I'm like, hey, buddy, let's go play over here. Let's yeah. go over there. So thanks a lot to the dinosaur kid for holding up uh, our, our David Ortiz uh, interview. But uh, about it, dude, I wanted to bring this up. I actually haven't brought this up to you personally, uh, but I wanted to. I didn't expect him to be so distraught when I asked him about the, the uh, what he thought of spring training. It's like the very first question I thought yeah. like, oh, we'll keep it light. And then we'll get into, you know, at the end, we'll touch on like, so Rafi says that the team sucks, huh? And the ownership's really fucking things up, huh? But I thought, okay, we'll open with, hey, you're just in spring training. Pictures all look nice. You're seeing everybody picture you and Duran together. How is the vibes? How is everything down there? You know, Alex Cora said the vibes are trophy worthy. What do you think? And he went, 
you know, we're rebuilding. Yeah. I was not expecting him to come out of the gate just so uh, so upset. But it is, in a weird way, heartening to see that he does genuinely give a shit about the team. You can tell his heart is still invested in the team. Oh, yeah, and he's not just using that advisor role to just be like, everything's good up here. I don't know what you're talking about. Garrett Whitlock's going to turn it around. We don't need a starting pitcher. He certainly Dude. is not doing that, and neither was Pedro. Wouldn't that be awful if both of them, like the yeah. heroes of our childhood, got up there and were just doing the Sam Kennedy bit and were just telling us to our faces, like, you know, I have a lot of faith in the future. Uh, things are looking good, and it's tough to manage a baseball team. You know, from a financial perspective, you know, obviously there are restraints. Every team, every team has restraints. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm just excited for another good year. We got to go out there and win baseball games. It would, it would make me pull my eyes out of my head. So I'm, yeah, I'm glad that actually, he cares. There's actually a point that the old YouTube. I don't know. Are we just gonna. I don't know. The old ITM YouTube. I guess is just dead. I don't know what we're doing with that. But uh, it's still. You can, you can see the videos. I. The, that's the only place we posted the Pedro thing. And there's actually a point where I ask him. Uh, he he actually made me laugh because I mentioned that Heim got fired and. Uh, Spoiler, a lot of the former players, not big time guys, um, they didn't yeah. relate to the analytic guy. Fred Lynn, you know, who you've had and I've talked to in that whole thing with getting the merch and everything. Um, he, he was like, I didn't get that guy because, uh, you know, you go in his room and it's all computers and he, he doesn't know how to talk ball. I just I think that's an exaggeration. But um, yeah. with Pedro, I asked him about, you know, how things were going and he, he just like laughed almost like, like smirked at how bad things were. And it like made me, I had to cut it in a way that I, cause I didn't want to make him look bad, but it was, yeah. he gave me like a, I was like, we're going through some changes. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yep. Um, and yeah, you I, could call it that. You I, could call it changes. Yeah. yeah. So they're all like, yeah, they're, they're on the same page as us. I'll say that. Yeah. And that, and that's nice to see. Um, but that was, I mean, it was all good stuff from Poppy. I felt like there were two times, maybe two times where, uh, my question kind of got lost and he didn't necessarily answer what I asked, yeah. but that's okay. That's okay. Um, do you think he was like, uh, not upset, but do you think he was like, look at this fucking idiot when I was like, ah, do you feel like you could go back out there and suit up? Cause what I was trying to get at was like, what are you, what are you feeling when you walk in there? Are you like, God damn, I wish I could suit up. Yeah. That and wasn't I, really your question. It was more just like, what happens when you get in there and see the park? But I, and he took it yeah. as like a, no, dude, I'm play baseball in five years. Are you stupid. <laughs> yeah. He, yeah. He was um, like, man, it's a lot of preparation. I'm like, I'm not saying the job's easy, bro. That's not, yeah. that's not what I meant, Dave. No, I wouldn't say he was fully, I wouldn't say he was nearly like at a, in a level of upset or anything, but I do think he was more just like a, no, I mean, like, he I does it think would, I'm a it, fucking idiot you know, that doesn't understand you need, the game. These now. guys need spring training and they're in their prime. I would, I would need some time to take some hacks here. Um, yeah, I didn't really like that, didn't stand out to me in the moment. So that makes you feel better. Okay. Well, that's something that does make me feel a little better. Um, two things. Uh, speaking of spring training, uh, we should get to some sock stuff, talk about spring training a little bit. There has been some news, believe it or not. And secondly, uh, this will not be our final episode before the season. So tomorrow night, if you're listening to this uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday night, Thursday morning, around there, uh, we will drop our season predictions episode, uh, season preview, whatever you want to call it. I think we call it season predictions. Uh, I'm not in the business of making up new names for things. So whatever we've been calling stuff, that's what we're going to keep calling stuff. Uh, we'll, we will be putting that out tomorrow. We have a guest uh, tomorrow who, uh, slightly less exciting than David Ortiz, but exciting. Hey, nonetheless, he somebody, stinks. he sucks. I'll just say it. He stinks. Uh, he was down at spring training. Uh, he got some great stuff, some stuff that did some numbers that went a little viral. This is called a tease. It's a clue. Figure it out who it is. Uh, so we're going to have him on, uh, talk about that stuff. That happened down in spring, what he saw, what his uh, first experience at spring training was like. Uh, and then Scotty and I will be doing our season predictions. I don't call you Scotty. Does anyone call you Scotty? Um, my dad does this thing where he tells people he doesn't call me Scotty, but then he'll he'll do it. Like he'll he, do it anyway. I, he'll be like, Do you call like another parent when I was like seven and be like, Do you call him Scotty or Scotty? And he'd be like, Scott. 
And then I'll walk by and be like, hey, Scotty. And then they'll look at her, him like he's um, a pathological liar. So that's a that's Okay. We'll look into that. Sounds limited. like your dad might yeah. be a pathological path, pathological liar. So we'll, we will be he's, looking into that. There's, there's what, more to come. Talk better than you. Jesus. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> um, I, not like I get paid for it. No. Little Sox. We should talk about a little bit of the Red Sox. Uh, a couple of headlines here. We're just going to kind of breeze through them. Uh, Steve leaving does not change the fact that I'm not uh, a spring training guy, uh, at least not in this year. Were there years? Absolutely. 2022, uh, you know, coming off the 2021 ALCS, adding story. Absolutely. Exciting stuff. Last year, less exciting. Lost bogey. I don't know if you guys remember. Less we together. This year, we were. We were together. We were together when that news dropped. We were at a bar together. I told you. I was playing beer pong, and you were crying in the corner, and I was like, what's going on, Joey? I didn't cry. I didn't cry. Really? I didn't cry. seemed like it. I didn't cry. other people in the bar. One of them's a couple floors above me right now, and I think he would Uh, say that you were crying. I don't think I cried. I don't think there's any proof that I cried. I'll tell you that. I got a primary source. There's two floors upstairs. I can get them right now. Um, Well, I did go to journalism school, so I don't even know what that means. Uh, but this year spring training, I can't say it was exciting. I did have the opportunity to go. I did choose not to, uh, but there are still things coming out of it right now that are worth mentioning. Uh, the first being some of the newer news, Sedan Rafaela has been named to the opening day roster will be the opening day center fielder. I was vocal on this show about wanting to keep him, uh, in triple a till may and retain an mm-hmm. extra year of control. I believe it was May 16th that he had to stay down there until for him to come up. Do I think he's looked great this spring? Yes. Is that based off of the highlights on Twitter and the six games that I watched? Yes. But in my mind, it, I think it's a puzzling decision. And people are celebrating it because the guy is getting the moment that he deserves, which is cool. The guy's worked hard. Every big leaguer has. That's great. Take your moment. But... It's a puzzling decision to me for a team that values control so much and talks about the bright, young, promising future and the stars of tomorrow and all that. And when you're waiting on the rest of your core to come up, to not retain that extra year of control so that Sedan Rafaela can play some April baseball is so counterintuitive to their own philosophy to me. I understand everybody celebrating it. It's really weird to me. I really don't love it. Do you have any thoughts on on Sadan? Yeah, I, I I mean I completely agree with what you just said about it going against everything they're saying. Uh, if you're you know you're building against the future and all that stuff, unless they think he can win Rookie of the Year realistically and get us the draft picks, that would be my only exception. But I I certainly he does not seem like the most big league ready guy. There's about seven people on the Orioles. I'd give a better shot to. Um, didn't did Jackson him. holiday just not make the opening day roster? He did not, but he is uh, 12 Crazy. years old still. So, I mean, he's still, I don't think he's pitched. I think he's still on the little diamond. So he's, yeah. he hasn't played in the big diamond yet, but he's looking good down there. So I'm sure it'll be a matter of time now, but I mean, even still, they have uh they still have a couple few guys like Cowser and Mayo and all those guys, that even if they don't come up day one could still, I would put them ahead in the race. Uh, the thing that, I find weird about it is that the, just the roster construction in general, you don't have in my eyes, other than ref Snyder, who's hurt many part-time type of guys. Like, and it seems like we're doing, we might be in a situation with multiple platoons. Like, are we going to have a situation where it's, you know, Yoshida DHing, you have Rafaela in center, a platoon with, Duran and Abreu or a platoon with O'Neill and Abreu. And then when Ref Snyder gets here, you do another platoon on top of that. Like I, that's what I'm puzzled about. It also leaves no room for Yoshida to get any reps in the outfield, which I mean, I've made my thoughts clear on here before. I mean, we did ask Poppy about it. Um, also didn't get like a directly straight answer, but uh, I still like Yoshida getting reps in the field. I think it's just a little too quick to give up on the guy entirely. I don't think his defense was like detrimental, but if they're building the uh, the outfield that you're talking about and there's not an impending trade of one of those guys, which we all expected to happen by now, we expected a lot of things to happen this offseason by now, 
But if that's not happening, then you just have a crowded outfield with no space for him to take uh, take any time in the outfield. And like you said, these multiple platoons, like Tyler O'Neill is supposed to be an everyday guy. Jaron yeah. Duran, you if you want him to, him to fully develop, you want right. him to be an everyday guy. Uh, Abreu, people are high on. You should probably want him to be an everyday guy, right? Like maybe not right out of the gate, but like this is the kind of year where where that guy on a rebuilding team would be getting a lot of reps or at least not have, you know, a hard ceiling. Like what, how many games realistically does Will Your Abreu play? Well, it's, it's tricky. Cause again, if you're putting the matchups together and Abreu and O'Neill have both seem to make the most sense in right field. And if you're going to do that, you know, you're going to have O'Neill only play against lefties like twice a week. I don't think that's going to be the case. So then when do you just go, O'Neill plays against every righty and then 50% of the lefties. And then like, I, I don't know. It just, it's a weird yeah. now injuries will clear this path pretty quickly. It's 162 game season. You need depth. I'm not saying, you know, it's a good thing to have this problem a hundred percent, but yeah, the Rafaela stuff does kind of force the issue. And when it doesn't feel super necessary, because I feel like Duran developed defensively and you want to yeah. see if he can be that guy, if he could do what he did last year, this year, we got a legitimate star. Like, it's not just a good stretch. And he's been uh, pretty vocal about working on his running. He, I mean, he's already, you know, the flash, but he's been working on his uh, his form and whatnot can only help him defensively. Yeah. The one thing uh, that I didn't really take into consideration, which is just straight up stupid of me, is uh, the injury bug because this team kind of is built for that. That's one thing that they rock at. Uh, and Tyler O'Neill has had two calf issues already in spring. Uh, yes, but so, it, what you were saying about waiting to call him up still is in play. It's not like they have to set it now forever. You know, like what you were saying about let him, you know, if, if we can go six weeks without an injury, then it might work out perfectly. Everybody's got playing time as long as you have one injury throughout that period, which between six guys, one of them's already down. Very realistic. So, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like what you were saying makes sense. It's a weird, it's a weird situation because the lineup is not bad. No. It's just there's there's a a bunch of weirdness about it, and there's a there's a bunch of weird things. The the outfield specifically, the infield is set. The infield is set. You got second base is weird. Yeah, yeah. Right now, right now, I'm saying you know, end of the year, set. Second base is going to be very weird. Um, I don't love the idea that we're running a platoon there either. Um, obviously now with CJ Crone being released. Uh, basically means first base is going to be a platoon because Bobby's got to get, I think he's got to get a hundred games in there. Hope so. Uh, yeah. Has to absolutely has to. Thanks for coming, Tristan. It's been nice knowing you. Uh, I was stunned by that, to be honest with you. Obviously I'm joking here, uh, but uh, CJ Crone, the second, I mean, it th never made any sense for him to be here. Because you had Bob. Like, Bob is that. You're looking for a guy to back up Cassis. You are, you have him. And it just shows more of how much they don't believe in Bobby. So it's such a weird thing to do this, to do this act of signing CJ Cron that says, we we really don't believe in you, Bob. <laughs> and then, you know, two months later, be like, all right, Bob, I guess it's you. Yeah, you're coming to the bigs. You made the team. Come on up. And still give him, yeah, I mean, what, 30, 40 games maximum that he's going to see playing time? Because when we already talked about the DH slot, he's not really going to slide in there. He's going to get Tristan off his feet. That's what he's going to do. Uh, it's just, it's all weird. It, it just keeps pointing out, like, Bobby doesn't, he doesn't need to be here. Like, trade Bobby away? I don't know. It's, it's always, I'm excited that Bob's on the team. Presumably, presumably hasn't been announced. But uh, I don't know. It's all weird to me. Yeah, I, the Crone saga made no sense from the beginning. He didn't – you didn't see him forever. He ended up playing – I because I was just curious. Six games, he went three for 15. Six games, he was signed on March 3rd, and they just seemed to, like, bring him real, real slow. And that was always a story. It wasn't like – a lot of tweets, a lot of like, here's when to expect. Well, it was just kind of like, yeah, we have this guy, kind of. We're going to see it. He's going on the backfields. And I didn't really seem to give him a shot. Like, I don't know. Like, what could he have done in six games? What was the plan for him? There wasn't one. 
And what's funny is that we'll always have a Nesson in dugout interview with CJ Crone in Red Sox gear. That is awesome. That we will always have that. There's no reason that he that needed to happen. There's no reason he needed to be here. Uh, I'm I'm excited that Bob gets another shot. My mother's more excited than anybody. She's been texting me nonstop asking about Bobby, asking me to tell uh, Bobby a personal congratulations. So. Bob, I know you're listening. Uh, Mom is stoked for you. Uh, the other, the other weird one, the very weird one that I don't have an answer for. I don't think anybody has an answer for is Brennan Bernardino being optioned to Worcester. Uh, this team is just telling you they don't, they don't want lefties. They don't want left-handed pitching, which is certainly a decision. Uh, I don't know what people could have seen out of Bernardino uh, within the team that they wanted to change. Great spring numbers. Uh, just another weird decision, and it's putting. I mean, it's is Joelli the only lefty? Slayton, I guess, yes. could be in there. There's uh, there's no left-handed pitching. Slayton's a left. Is he? Is he? Am, am I, I wrong there? Am I tripping? Uh, he's a good no, he's shot. A righty. He's, he's a righty. Yeah, he's, he's a righty. righty. I got so they have no lefties. Okay, you just really. Whew, I thought I wrote a couple bad articles there, Joey. You can't be doing that to me. <laughs> I well, you're gonna have to get used to that. That's me just pulling stuff out of my ass. It's kind of my mo, dude. Uh, but I mean, I mean, let me pull up their their uh, their whole pitching staff here. Well, so I could I could tell you the only thing that makes sense that I've heard, and and it, again, it did not have to be an either or. Is you know, Joelli opted out, so you had to put him on the big league roster if you wanted to keep him. Where with Bernardino, you put him in AAA, you do get to keep both. Now, why don't just keep them both at the big league level? I think one thing that was a little surprising is that Slayton came on and he said, I am just as good as the hype, and I'm already that good right now. Campbell, another guy that I was really excited about. I love those guys. And then Weiser has always been talked about as a AAA guy like that could maybe jump on. But that guy, I don't know if anybody's seen him throw a slider before, but uh, he should be on the big league roster in my opinion. So I think the in-house talent, that's the one area where it's like, you know, I've always been like, you know, spend, why aren't we spending, why aren't we spending? They went cheap on the bullpen, and I think they figured it out. So I think they really just made more competition than uh, they expected. The one guy that I'm just going to debunk everything I'm saying, why on earth is Chase Anderson on this team? Uh, because they just have to, they have to make – signings at some point they have to just do something they have to just be um in the news i guess legally i have no idea i have zero How does he idea. get a big league deal but crone doesn't jolie doesn't he that guy spoiler he sticks um he's yeah. got a well hey hey four or something last year he two four five this spring bro watch it four See, games. i didn't have that information in front of me so yeah, 11 innings, 245 ERA, uh, an 073 whip. Again, that's spring training. That's that's uh, mm-hmm. four spring training games. Uh, but yeah, no, a 542 last year, a 142 whip, which uh, if you're keeping the score at home, uh, constitutes a bad whip. It's a bad whip. So I mean, he was good. I don't when understand he was. it either. 2017 was awesome for him. I'm so tired so. of hearing that about everybody on this pitching staff for the past years. Like the past three years has been like, yeah, but if this was 2016, if this was 2017, dude, he'd be good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's, yeah, it's not, dude. It's closer to 2030. That's unfortunately true. Yeah. yeah By the way, when did Lucas just, Giolito get hurt? I'm seeing IL-60. What do we got going on here? When did that happen? Oh, don't worry about that. He'll be fine. That's nothing. Um, okay. spe- yes, L- Chris Murphy also hurt, so no, uh, there's another lefty gone. Uh, so I just, I don't think you're going to have uh, any for a bit. I think it's going to be a little bit of of none, no lefties. So, totally. yeah, he's he's everyone fine. keeps saying he's got a good changeup. Good changeup. I wish you would throw it in the game. Of, uh, uh, Jose Ramirez, you know what I'm talking about? Good changeup. Yeah, yeah, I do. It was uh, yeah. well, I don't know. What I was gonna say it was Jose Ramirez. You already said that, so yeah, I saw yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Poppy. Thank you. All right. Um, the only other thing, speaking of uh, pitchers, uh, this is just the last little piece of Red Sox news, and it's actually news that there's no news. Uh, Jordan Montgomery is still a free agent, dude. 
It is yeah, yeah. at this moment, 48 hours before spring, uh, opening day, 48 hours to opening day. And the uh, de facto ace through a couple of injuries of the World Series winning Texas Rangers does not have a home. Does he? Ready? Ready? I'm going to bring one back. This is for the OG listeners that listened all the way back to last week. Water gun to your head, dude. Water balloon over your head. Jordan Montgomery signed before opening day. Is he signed in the next 48 hours? I'm going to say no, Joey. I'm going to say no. I have. I will never. If you say, like, in the next couple of days, I'm always just going to say no. Uh, I think he'll be signed by June. I don't know. We don't have that weird, like, qualifying. He doesn't even have a qualifying offer. But there was, like, that period of time when guys like Kimbrell waited till like, June until that thing passed. He doesn't even have one. That's not even a rule anymore. They changed that in that fun little CBA that they did uh, a couple years ago. So I, there is no reason for him to, I mean, to not have gotten paid. Uh, it's been, I've probably written a hundred articles about Jordan Montgomery. Keep in mind, I also cover the St. Louis Cardinals. So, um, every day it was like, well, should we probably, right? Yeah. I was talking to my, uh, to my mom about, uh, Monty recently. And she was like, did the Sox still get him? And I was like, oh, I don't know. She's like, oh, I saw an article that the Yankees might get him. I was like, you, Ma, you could read that mm-hmm. the fucking Rays are going to get him. Like, there's nothing. Nobody knows anything. Nobody knows anything. We're all just still, we're, we've been diving into our bag of tricks for months. It's empty now. Now there is, now there is nothing. And the fact that Scott Boris this past week decided to just say, no, he's got multiple multi-year offers out there. No, we got a lot of deals on the table. So do not worry about us. We are good over here. Hilarious. No, you don't, Scott. No, you do not have any offers on the table. That is insane. He may. He may. He may. He, he doesn't, though. He may. But he doesn't. Um also, for me personally, Red Sox odds for Monty at this point, one uh, percent. It's it's just fallen to borderline impossible to me. Yeah, I don't I don't even know how to give a take anymore because I like looking in a vacuum. I agree, but I keep coming back to the fact that he has to sign somewhere. It's presumed that he'll sign. He'll play baseball again, uh, and in that case, the Astros have said they don't want him. The Rangers have said they don't want him. The Yankees have said they don't want him. The Giants got Blake Snell. The Cardinals have said we're not doing, we're not spending any money. Where he's got to go somewhere, and we're we're and the you know the Cubs said they're not doing anything else. Who like what are we what are we doing? Where's he gonna go? Is he gonna go to the Pirates or something? I mean, is it impossible that he goes to a dog shit team like that and you know what? I, gets a two year deal, one year deal? I could see. I think. I mean, I would imagine he would have had at least a competitive one year or three year with an opt out. What's really a one year deal with a with a competitive team? If I'm and I'm going to say this, and people aren't going to like this one. If I'm like the Dodgers right now, I'm just like, what's twenty more million at this point? We spent a billion. Let's let's just you know yeah. the pitching staff's kind of weird for them. Let's go. Let's just make this more of a super team. Or and and the Yankees too. Like they had, with with their injuries they have. One year, twenty five million, or at three years, seventy five. But really, you hope he opts out after a year or something. Yeah, I don't know. And, Especially and it's with the hold down, that makes but, a ton of sense. Yeah, it, and and with us, it makes obviously it's always made sense. Uh, yeah. it, and even like people say now, like, well, now it doesn't even move the needle because Giolito's hurt. But if it if it's not a one year deal, you want to do that because while Breslow says I'm going to do nothing and then I'm going to turn it on makes a lot more sense to kind of build this thing slowly. So the next off season you go, well, I already have like a number two frontline star, maybe a co-ace type of guy. We're going to have Giolito back instead of just being like, no, when right now it feels like his plan is when Teal, Anthony Meyer come up, we're going to sign 15 new players. And yeah, I don't that's, know. That's exactly what it sounds so, like. So sign them now so that when next off season, mm-hmm. when they're in triple a and they're, probably going to come up mid season and they're almost ready. You already got some pitching. Also, 
What if you just win some games, irregardless of your prospect development? That would be cool. That would be cool to just win some games. It's also, this is getting a little ahead of ourselves. Is there any slot for any of these guys? I mean, Teal. Teal, I guess. You know, you, you just, you know, you swap out uh, Wong and, and Maguire for, yeah, you just switch them out, put them in opposite roles, have, you know, Wong backing up Teal. I get, well, I mean, not at first, but. You know, yeah, and uh, in time, that, that's what you hope would happen. Nothing. There's no place for them. You just got Von Grisham for Grissom, Grissom, Grissom. Check the pronunciation page, Grissom. You just got Grissom for what five, six years. You got a lot of control of him. You still got multiple years on story. Like I don't necessarily know. Whatever. It's very weird. I don't. I don't. It, it's all. It's all. Gross. They get signed yeah, Montgomery. Well, we gotta wait for deal. these. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does, and it wouldn't. It wouldn't change anything there. But to then be like, oh well, we got to wait for these two infielders, uh, or like a catcher and an infielder to come up, uh, and then uh, we got to jam somebody in our outfield, uh, and then we can sign a full rotation. All right. Well, we'll be here. We'll be here hanging out, uh, having an okay time. I was gonna say having a good time. Having an okay time. Uh, now, Steve Peralt uh, took empty in the bench. We don't have it anymore. Wow. There are currently some contract negotiations. Um, it sounds like there's a little bit of uh, infighting going on over there for the, over the segment. So that might be under our control uh, in the near future. But for right now, we just don't have it. So I'm just not going to empty the bench. But uh, okay. actually, I don't even we know just... if I can say those words. Yeah, I I wouldn't I would not play it safe and bleep that. Um, yeah, but yeah, could a question? Um, yeah, yeah. What if we just did uh, the same thing, but we called it something different? Yeah. Do you have a name for an episode? Um, empty in my brain for thoughts. Empty with in my brain Steve, for thoughts or of thoughts of of thoughts with Stephen. Em- no, that's Steve. He's dead. Uh, Joey. Yeah. I was going to say Steve and Joey because that's I'm usually giving you guys ideas. Right. Um, Scott and Joey. That's me. Um, yeah. Was that good? Your your name's going first. Yeah, obviously. Did you notice how the graphic you released today? I was on the left. I didn't make the graphic. I Shout out John Palmer but... for the graphic. Thank you for the graphic. Yeah, it was a great he... graphic. I should have been on the what left, you... but thank you for the graphic. No, but he he made that call because he could feel the shift. Well, he also put my name above yours, but well, you told him to do that. I don't know if I did. <laughs> Might have taken that on himself. Hi, right, you guys tell us who you think is in charge here. I don't I like that. Don't that. do that. Don't 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 ask them that. Don't talk to them. I'm gonna be doing the intro tomorrow and you're gonna be real upset about it. Don't talk to them. They're not no, you're not doing the intro. I, we do have a cool person doing the intro. Um, but now it's been an, it's been enough time where this guy told me he would do it. And then and reached back out and was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to do it at this place. And I was like, right on. Very cool. Let me know uh, when it is. And now I feel like uh, it's been too long to reach back out. So uh, I'm just not going to put one in. Uh, and then if and when you guys hear it, uh, he has reached out and done it. I did not follow up with him because I do not do that. Uh, do you have any anything for emptying our brain of thoughts with Joey and Scott? It literally rhymes when you go second. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's a lot of ways. There's a lot of reasons for me to go second. Um, we'll talk about it. I mean, I'm not sold yet. You make some you good have points. Any thoughts to empty? Do you have any thoughts have, to empty? I have one. All right. And would you like me to go first? Does it, wait, would that not just constitute like a closing thought then? Do you have a closing thought? I'm going to be honest with you. I've been on yep. the show before. I've listened to it before I acquired yep. it. I've never really known the difference. Um, it's usually like empty in the bench is like, ah, here's a bunch of bullshit. And then closing thought is and like, yo, I got is a not a bunch of bullshit. Or final a closing thought is like, you got one and it's like a, here's my thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You get, you get the floor a little bit. Okay. Then I'm going to, mm, again, I feel like this one could go in either, but uh, I'll go closing thought. Right, let's make a decision. All right. <laughs> closing thought. Uh, you go first. Good segment. That was a good segment. All right. That was a great segment. People are going to be right. I'm starting to think I'm good at this. 
People send a lot of DMs about the pitching previews. They're like, you know, this segment is my life. This is the reason that I listen to this show. Like, I really found out who I am because of the segment. And, like, I appreciate all those messages. I'm a little overwhelmed by them, but I get them a lot. We're going to be getting a lot about emptying your brain of thoughts with Joey and Scott. We're going to be getting a lot of DMs about that segment. That was fucking awesome. Um, (laughs) Now your closing thought, dude, if you can follow that. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a shot. Um, oh, good transition. Uh, we were told 10 minutes before the David Ortiz interview. I just want to be clear. Everyone's going to be like, I feel like you elephant in the room there. They did not want us to ask him about the time he got shot. So people are going to be like, why did, why wasn't, why didn't you say that? We had those questions lined up. And then the 10 minutes before they kind of pulled the carpet from us. So yeah, I just feel like that was, I'd be remiss to not mention that because people are going to be like, why didn't you talk about that traumatic time with him? Yeah, I Joey? mean, I'm not sure we would have taken the interview if they had told us that earlier. I'm right. really glad they reached out while we were in the Zoom waiting room to be like, by the way, don't ask him about getting shot. So yeah, shout out to uh, <laughs> to Miller Light for that. Thank you. Thanks a lot for that. That was cool. That was cool of them. Yeah, really screwed us at the end there, but yeah. Um, I got a closing thought too. You could go. Okay, I was waiting for your permission. I don't know. Uh, So Steve left the show, as you guys know. Oh, my God. And since then, uh, I've gotten between uh, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, my, my personal phone number text message, I've gotten probably about 500 messages. Uh, It is overwhelming and impossible to reply to them all. Uh, Not to say that I do not appreciate them all. And 99.9% of them, very, very nice. Um, I I say 90, I think it was 100. There was a guy who even reached out who like had been a dick on Twitter a few weeks prior. He was like, hey man, I just wanted to reach out and apologize. Like that, which is crazy. That one almost made me feel like, hey, don't feel bad for me. Don't, Don't reach out and say, Hey man, I didn't realize you were going through. Like oh, now, I feel bad. We're not going through anything. So um, I want to say a couple of things. Is this is a general reply to all of those messages that I got? If I can try to do that. Uh, the fact that people connected with the show and have connected with the show and hopefully will continue to connect with the show means the absolute world to me. There was a message that made me get a little weepy. And it made me stop replying to him because I was like, I can't do it. It's emotionally overwhelming. But the message basically said, I had never listened to a Red Sox podcast before ITM. And when I watched the games, I was always looking forward to like sitting down for a conversation with my buddies, Steve and Joey. And that's exactly what I've always wanted people to think of with this show. Uh, it's always what, what we aimed for uh, was people just feeling like they're hanging out, talking socks, having a good time, sense of community, all that stuff. So to see that it resonated means a lot. Um, and there were also people who reached out and wanted to be a part of this show, the next iteration of the show, the next chapter of the show. People who said, you know, I don't, I, I've never worked in it before, but I heard, you know, your story of you taking your shot with Steve and I'm, I'm taking my shot with you and I want to be involved in any way. Those messages did not go unnoticed. I promise I will be, be reaching back out. Uh, it is tough right now and working with a bigger company, uh, they're not a bigger company, but a a company with more hands at the wheel, a company with more hands directly at the wheel. Uh, it's, it's hard to make those decisions alone. I mean, you can't make those decisions alone. Uh, do I think that we, uh, need, you know, production help right now? No. Um, we would, we would love to. Uh, you know, have a bunch of guests on and stuff. But in terms of like hiring a third chair, I don't think that's really what we're doing right now. Uh, but I do appreciate all those messages uh, and and reaching out. I think that's just a great thing to do. So keep, keep at it. If you were one of those people who reached out and said, hey, I want to work in this industry. This is my love. This is what I want to do. Keep doing it. Uh, yeah, close but no that... cigar, brother. I took your spot. Sorry yeah. <laughs> yeah, eat rocks. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, no, no, thank really you to everybody. You. There's some really, some really great, nice messages in there. Uh, so thank you to all you people at home. Uh, Scott, you got anything else? Am I allowed to have two closing thoughts? Because that was, I thought that was 
I don't know. I feel like you're I mean, switching the rules here. We're past closing thoughts. Now it's like uh, now it's like we're in the oh, outro. Oh, come on, man. You know how long are you going to drag this thing out? We got three closing thoughts? Okay. No, yeah. we're past um, it. We're past it. I'm I'm okay. trying to get to the outro. Do you got a thought? Do you have something you want to say? Yeah. I, well, I'll just say I got a lot more followers than I thought I would from that. I mean, I don't use social media. So that, it was good to see that, you know, people still care about you, Joe, because, you know, who knew, you know? Uh, yeah, not and, me. Uh, yeah, the promo was cool. The messages were cool. Um, and to those people that, uh, you know, we're reaching out to join. I actually, when the first show was created, the EI, I'd never even told you this before, but uh, mm. I actually applied audition for that too. I did it when, oh, did you? yeah, I was like, my parents were asleep and I did it really quiet and it was absolute trash. I heard your last episode on the plane ride and found that you had this similar experience where you were like, that sucked. Let's send it. And uh, yeah, so the, you'll get there. Took me eight months after college where I was unemployed. Then things blew up real fast. So. Go, take some going. of us eight months, take some of us eight years. Um, but yeah, no, keep at it, everybody. Thin, thank you so much for those messages. Uh, and we will be back uh, either Wednesday night, Thursday morning for our season preview episode for the 2024 Boston Red Sox Major League Baseball season. This has been ITM with CLNS Media brought to you by Prize. Picks. I am Joey Capone. It's Scott Neville. Go Sox, kid. Go oh, Sox, wow. kid. Did that sound? Go Sox, kid. Yeah. Go Sox, Go kid. Go Sox, kid. Is that? Yeah, Go Sox, comma, kid. Right. Go, Go Sox. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.